Hello everyone and welcome to today's Twitter Spaces on staff retention by role and how experience impacts retention. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We hope you've had a lovely day. A little bit earlier Spaces today, which is. is quite nice and a bit of a change. We hope you've put the kettle on and you've got a nice cup of tea or coffee. Uh, and Might be a bit late for coffee. Well, it could be a bit late for coffee and you're settling down probably still at school yeah. to listen to this Twitter spaces and we hope we give you a little bit of company and some food for thought for your afternoon. Shall we get started? Yeah. So I am Jonathan. And I'm Lucy and we're both from Head Teach Chat and we provide you with guidance and resources uh, to help you in your leadership role. And today we are, it's a real pleasure to introduce Iona from Interior. And uh, so she's the head of Insight at Agerio, an experienced researcher who transitioned into the education sector and done the creation and analysis of Agerio school surveys. So today, Iona is here to discuss the latest re um, report focused on staff retention issues. Yeah, because staff retention in schools at the minute, as I'm sure everybody in the country is aware, is really, really, really tricky. And I think it it was bad before the pandemic, wasn't it? And it was, it, yeah. I think it's on a whole other level now, and it's at a level we've never seen before. And it's definitely a real challenge. And, you know, our, our community's been telling us that, haven't they? They have, and it's from my own experience. So, like, eight, nine years ago when I was interviewing, I was getting 20 to 25 applicants. Mm -hmm quite a few good applicants coming to the role. Mm. The last time I put an application form out, I had two applicants yeah. coming to the role. Yeah. And it was really hard because you're trying to do this, um, trying to get the best for the children in school. Mm. And actually you don't have the richness of the field to actually employ for okay. the roles that you have in school. And the community is also saying that. I mean, we have many questions on what's happening in schools about staffing and retention and the culture of the school. Mm. It's quite a popular topic on our chat, on our anonymous post, and it's about, we had one the other day, okay, what is the best way of actually doing flexible working for working parents and things like that. Then another one was someone's school business manager has just left how they resolve that issue of school business manager. They can't employ anyone for about six, seven weeks. Actually, what do they do? First started out in teaching, there'd be 80 applicants for every job. Yeah. And it was a really sort of flooded market, really. And now it just seems to be that people are having to re-advertise and re-advertise and re-advertise. And sometimes they don't get any applicants at all. And it's just, it's so sad to see it. Really, really sad. So, you know, Iona, we're really pleased that you're here today to hear about what yourself and your team at Agurio have been doing. I know you've been conducting a substantial survey examining this issue, and we're really interested to find out, you know, what you discovered. Welcome, Iona. Hello. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. I'm um, excited to be here today and hoping uh, to share some useful insights um, with you all today. Um, so the research is based on um, a survey that we've been running now for the last five academic years. Uh, we started in 2018, 2019. And since then, we've captured the voices of over 110,000 staff members. We've released a number of reports since then. The most recent one that we're here to talk about today launched one week ago today, last Tuesday, and this looks at the overall experience among school staff and drivers of retention for staff in different roles. We can have a kind of in-depth chat about the about about what we've learned, but a, a brief summary. So the survey itself looks at overall experience across a range of different factors. So we look at things like staff relationships, student behaviour pay and benefits, and things like the relationship with the trust. It's quite a, a far-reaching survey. It's, it's meant as a kind of broad experiential 
a broad look across the experience of what it is to be a staff member within English schools. We found some parts of the experience to be more positive overall and others to be much more negative. Um, I'll share a bit more detail on those in a moment, but uh, we've also been tracking uh, the risk of resignation across those years. So what we mean by that is among um, among all staff that we that we survey, we ask them how often they've thought about resigning in the past three months um, and those who have done so some uh, anything other than rarely. So sometimes frequently all the time we we track kind of the, their risk of resignation because we've been able to track that over kind of the last four years. And we have, as I say, that kind of wider experience stuff and those, those the, the tracking around risk of resignation, we're able to put those two things together and we're able to see kind of what are the areas where, st the, where, the, where, where there's a kind of stronger relationship with risk of resignation and what are the areas where there's a, a less strong relationship with the logic being that areas which are either very positive and have a strong relationship or very negative and have a strong relationship might need more focus if something is 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 an area where staff are kind of quite unhappy and that's an area that's got a strong relationship with retention that might be the place to start if we're if we're trying to if we're trying to sort of prioritize our actions around tackling the staff attention um crisis so what did you find out in terms of risk of resignation? How how bad is it? <laughs> so we've, yeah, as I say, we've been tracking it for four years, sorry, for five years now. And we've also tracked it, as I say, it's those who are thinking about resigning, which is slightly different to those who actually resign. I think it, the logic follows that more people have thought about resigning than than actually have done. But what we have done is, as I say, we tracked over the five years uh, and we saw a dip in the risk of resignation during the two years, which were most heavily impacted by COVID. So whilst we started looking at, if I, if I talk about teachers in particular, we started with 44% of teachers considering resigning in the first year of the survey. So before COVID was, was even a, a word that we knew, by 2020-21 that had dipped by 6%, only 38% of staff are considering resigning, and now it's higher than it was pre-pandemic. So this this last year, 49% of teachers had considered resigning. We also track that against the school work census, and as I say, we would expect there to be a smaller proportion that have actually resigned than have considered it, but we see that that, that trend is there as well. So dipping in resignation during the pandemic and now and now rebounding and leaving us with the situation that that we are in that we're seeing now and yeah as, as i as i kind of mentioned the we we look at this i, I mentioned we've had 110,000 responses since we launched the survey we focus mostly on this year's results in the in the most recent report but we still have kind of a significant number of <clears throat> responses that that can can tell us what's going on in schools before i give specifics there i want to be clear that every school is different we do see a huge range in the risk of resignation in some in some schools we saw as low as eight percent of staff considering resigning all the way up to 100 percent of staff in some schools who would consider resigning in the three months to taking the survey and that is really important to consider because what what I share today is not is not going to be the case in every single school. It's not going to be that just taking these things that I that I talk about today and going and implementing them are going to solve the retention crisis. That's that's um, that's far too um, optimistic. A, 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 a but yeah. So that's that's all of the caveats. I, I'll tell you the kind of parts of the experience where staff were most and least positive. So the, the top three areas, we see support from line manager, 70% 70, 70 of staff that were surveyed were positive about questions relating to support from their line manager. Communication was in second place with 68% of staff positive, and then trust, vision and values on 64%. Trust, vision and values, to be clear, is kind of knowing what the, the purpose of the trust is and knowing uh, how well they're embedded across, across the trust. On the other hand, on the bottom three, we have leadership dynamics, 
we have the relationship with the trust so that's how the actual kind of day-to-day -day being a member of the trust what it means to be a member of staff in a school that's in a trust that's the second lowest scoring area and then workload is by far the lowest scoring area just 23 percent of staff responded positively to questions about workload um, and for some for some groups that was much much lower for, for teachers in particular we saw a a significant a significantly lower positive response for for workload questions i think only 12 percent of 12 percent of middle leaders 16 percent of of teachers responded positively to workload questions so that is a significant issue that's the overall experience so it's also worth looking at the 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 kind of relationship of that with retention so i think yeah we can we can look at kind of both the the overall experience and say okay this is the area which is which is most difficult and then but it's also yeah tying that in with the with the retention question as well which is kind of the next the next big thing i'm just going to pause for a, a sip of my drink <laughs> that's fine i mean that's pretty scary though in some ways it's not like 49 percent Think oh, of half um, of all the teachers. Yeah, I think of resigning. <laughs> the, the scary thing is, if you put it into the context, that's five percent more than five years ago. Yeah. Okay, you got all the COVID years in between, but yeah, actually, there's a big gap. Yeah. Of those um, teachers wanting, and so more teachers are wanting to leave the profession than ever Plus before. on top of that, there's less teachers coming into the profession. Yeah. So, so no wonder we're getting a real drop in applications. It's a sort of compound effect, really. And then if you're looking at these um, census data, that looks like it's going to rise to about 10% of actual teachers leaving the profession, actually leaving them. Mm. I mean, that's a big yeah. number of just like 40,000 teachers are leaving it and actually we're not getting the people to come in that's why we've got crisis at the moment it really is a crisis and there's there's no other way to describe it i mean it's it, it's worrying really I, I can't imagine how schools are, are managing to fill the gaps it must be really really tough out there and i wondered if you had any like ideas in terms of how schools can solve this maybe perhaps tackle a retention problem for example yeah so as i said every every single school is different and it would be far too simple to say just go do these things and then and then the the problem will be solved but um what i will do is talk about where we found those relationships so i i just mentioned the kind of top three bottom three parts of the experience that we saw and now i can talk about the the areas with the strongest relationship with resignation so the number one area the area with the strongest relationship was leadership dynamics leadership dynamics covers things like how um, well staff in leadership positions understand the needs of their colleagues how respected rewarded and recognized staff feel and how staff feel their feedback is received and actioned by leadership you'll recall that i also listed leadership dynamics in the bottom three parts mm -hmm. of the experience yeah. so that is both a area where staff are perhaps less positive and an area that's got a, a strong relationship with with resignation so if i was going to say what's what's the what's the simple answer to this then it is it is areas around leadership so ensuring that staff feel respected rewarded and and, and recognized and also making sure that when staff give feedback it is kind of heard understood and it's clear what they've what the purpose of giving that feedback was obviously i work in the in the survey game but I, I, I always say that kind of one of the most damaging things you can do when you're asking for feedback is to make it seem like there was no point in giving feedback. So if you've done a survey, make sure you're saying thank you. If you found something out, make sure that you're kind of saying, yeah, what you've learned and ideally saying what you're going to do about it. So that's kind of the, the number one area. And then but, the other two yeah. areas. Yeah, but I think so in some ways on just general conversations what's happening in the school isn't it it's the, it's the ongoing giving feedback and actually responding to the feedback even if it's yeah. sort of like down the corridor okay can we do some improvement on this 
how do people people feel like they belong to the school and actually be part of that school so it's all mm -hmm. about those trust and values isn't it as well yeah absolutely I, I think it is about feeling kind of respected and heard um and feeling like the leadership understand your needs or your challenges and 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 those kinds of things which yeah the that's that comes from a one-to-one -one interaction that comes from all, all the different touch points that that leaders have across across the organization <clears throat> and then the other two areas that are worth noting is workload and communication so workload i told you was the number one worst area 23 percent of staff overall responded positively to questions around workload um, and when we talk about workload that's how often staff feel overworked how much they can plan their day and how easy they find it to stay on top of their responsibilities that's the yeah the it's got a reasonably strong relationship with retention it's also the the area where where staff were, were least positive positive. and the third one communication is a is a slightly merrier story because communication was actually the second highest scoring area so 68 percent of staff said they were uh, responded positively to questions around communication um, and it has a reasonably strong um, relationship with with re with retention so the, the takeaway there is keep going keep improving communication but but know that it is a an important an important tool and yeah could could be the reason why people might be staying or or not well, that's interesting that it was both a positive and a negative so it does show that when communication works it's really working well and but also yeah. you know when it's not working well it can have such a significant impact that somebody considers resigning I mean that's massive when you think it's just you know it's it's not easy communicating to everybody in a school. I mean, I've done it myself and it's hard to get messages around to everyone all of the time, every single day, making sure everybody's got the same information. But it's worth putting that effort into, isn't it? It's certainly worth investing a little bit of your time, making yep. sure that everybody does get those key messages. You know, there's lots of ways to do it. Staff there meetings. Are. Yeah. The memos. wonderful emails. Oh, the, the wonderful emails. We all have an email. I wouldn't recommend too many emails. No, I, I always like the, the face to face to actually meet people. Walk around the school, have and... a chat. Yeah, all of those sort of things. But just making sure that everybody gets the same information so that nobody feels left out. I think it's really, really worth that investment in time, don't you? It, it is definitely worth that, that investment. I mean, the, so the difference between the roles what um, yeah. what did you find out between the roles within schools and and what actually happened yeah so yeah when, when we track looking at the kind of risk of resignation over the over the years what was interesting is that there were significant differences between staff and different roles um and then now when we look at that through the lens of the experience we can also see that kind of playing out so every single year and we talked about teachers specifically already in this in this conversation but every single year that we've run the survey teachers have been the group at, with the highest proportion at risk of resignation so i mentioned we started on 44 percent and now we're on 49 middle leaders close behind i think that's in part because middle leaders a lot of middle leaders are teachers and um, so there's a significant overlap between between those two roles for that group when we look at the experience that kind of is is borne out so so teachers were i think not quite in every single factor that we looked at but in the vast majority of factors teachers were the most negative or the least positive uh, of all of the groups conversely we see senior leaders more positive than than others so senior leaders across the experience were were ranking were, were rating higher positivity than than their colleagues in in other roles and they have the group that's consistently got the lowest risk of resignation and that one i think is really interesting because at first glance you can sort of think okay senior leaders are the least at risk of resignation and the most positive we don't need to worry about senior leaders and and I think that I mean you guys work with head teachers 
as as kind of your your main kind of yeah people that you work with i think that that you can immediately feel your shackles going up when when i say that it's a it's not it's not a it's not the case at all and that is evident when you look at the trends so while senior leaders are the the group that are least at risk of resignation they have had among the highest increase so the biggest proportional increase since before covid to to now in the risk of resignation so it was 21% during 2020 2021 and now it's 29% so that's nearly the proportion has nearly doubled which is which is really significant the other group that I'll mention is teaching assistants who have also had a significant increase. It's not quite the, the same proportionally, but um, it is a significant increase from um, 32% during COVID to 44% now. Um, and within that, there is still those trends. So, so the three that I, that I mentioned, leadership dynamics, workload and communication consistently come up in the report we, we've we've only got a short window today, so I won't go through each role and say what the top three areas were for each. Uh, but it's all in the report. But uh, those three: uh, workload, leadership dynamics, and and communication do come up consistently across roles. But there are others which kind of sneak in. So for teachers, there are there are specific issues around the relationship with the trust that that comes out as a kind of a, a higher risk a higher relationship than with some of the other groups and for middle leaders we see pay, pay and benefits creeping into the kind of stronger relationships and where it's not as strong with with staff in other roles what were the what were the issues with senior leaders as much was it was it was it the same lead communication workload and leadership dynamics or were there other uh, I, I didn't I didn't quite did you say which areas was it for senior leaders for senior leaders yeah what did they report for senior leaders yeah so workload and communication are in there and then mm. the the other one which which doesn't make the it's in the bottom three for the kind of experience but not at the overall level for the relationship for the yeah relationship with risk resonation and that's relationship with the trust so how easy or difficult is it to voice work-related concerns to the trust how confident are you that trust leadership actively work to address the professional needs of staff those are areas that for senior leaders in particular the relationship was strong and and just to clarify what i mean when i say the relationship is strong that means those who were positive uh, in response to those questions were less likely to have considered resigning and those who were negative were, were more likely to have considered resigning. Okay, so is there a, a difference between, because the, the common theme through this is the trust. Is there a difference between a maintained school and a trust school then? I don't have that data to hand. So it possibly, I mean, maintained schools, we wouldn't be asking about the trust. So those areas would would yeah would wouldn't be in there so the the top three and bottom three therefore would be slightly different because the relationship with the trust would would not be a factor for those but i so i, I don't know whether or not the i don't i don't have to hand kind of what the bottom three would be for maintained schools but yeah the consistently we see kind of workload leadership dynamics as as issues uh, interesting it's yeah fascinating. It's fascinating. it shows um, that you know, it's it, these are things which are quite, they're not easily solved. It's a very complex and difficult picture, but it's something that we can at least start to tackle and have a look at. Yeah, and if anyone wants to find more information about the the report, where could they find it? Yeah, so on our, on our website, which is home.ajuru.com, we have this and a bunch of other of other resources. There, I believe when you log in there at the moment, along the top, you can click on resources and then head to all of our reports through there. And it's the top one that you'll find there. We can also share the share the link within the Twitter thread, if helpful. Super, yes, I'll set that up so that everybody can have a have a look there and 
and, and read that report. It's really amazing what you've done, really. 110,000 people who've taken part in in this survey. I mean, that's that's incredible, really. So well done to you guys at Agurio for collecting all of this information, really, and sharing it with us so that we can you know, have a look at it as a community and see what we can do to improve the situation, you know? And actually on the, on the website, they, they, there is quite a lot of other material that's quite useful for a school leader. Mm. I mean, the um, pupil safeguarding report, I, it was really interesting as well. So mm. it's not just um, this retention one, which is yeah. fascinating, actually having all the, the figures and what we can do about it. I'm not sure it's a short-term solution to it but actually trying to improve those communication skills trying to reduce the workload and trying to actually get the the sort of like the trust leadership skills actually leadership. compatible to the actual schools i think i think as long as we get the communication going you know the conversation started about what can we do to make recruitment and retention better in our school or academy trust I think that's that's at least a little win for the week. <laughs> um, and, like, you know, I think that's really important. You know, I think we can all collectively help and support each other. We're all we're all feeling it. Everybody in the community in the UK are feeling the same pressures. But it, it's again going to back to the fundamental um, characteristic. Of what is the culture of the school like? Mm -hmm. Actually, how do we actually make sure the culture is right for everyone to be working in that school yeah because you can have a good culture mm. and have good staff retention uh, in a school and that should be the focus and actually how do we do that mm. i wonder you know if you've got any questions that you know perhaps leaders could look at as like a, a prompt if you like as like a starting uh block <laughs> to kind of use when they're looking at their own school in terms of their self-evaluation, are there any sort of questions they could ask themselves? Yeah, so I think I, I think that this report is 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 a is a useful starting point. As I mentioned, there is significant differences between schools, so I wouldn't sort of if if you've never kind of done a, a sort of similar look at, at at the situation within your school, I wouldn't sort of take this as the bible and go and implement the things that are that are mentioned in here necessarily because it, it might be that the situation is different but yeah i think this is a, a good place to start and and basically to see of the of the areas that have been risen that have, that have kind of been raised within the within the report what play, what things are in place within the schools to to aid with those things and also, I guess what what actions are currently happening. So, thinking about leadership dynamics, if there are kind of if if we can see that there is a, a sort of uh, an issue with how valued staff are feeling, thinking about what are the, the actions that are currently being uh, that are currently in place that may or may not kind of signal um, those feelings. Same for kind of workload questions or or communication and 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 others across the experience as well. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Ian. It's been such a fascinating insight into, if a brief one, because, you know, it was quite short, but <laughs> I hope it's given our listeners a real summary of the amazing work that you guys have been doing at Ajurio and, you know, the, the sorts of things that you've discovered along the way. Yeah, and at Head Teacher Chat, we're here to support as many school leaders as possible and it's important that we find out about the issues in school and how we actually can address them so uh, there's a lot of resources and guidance on our website mm -hmm. the is on our website we're giving a sort of like why you should actually look at a geo and yeah. how it can benefit your schools yeah so do visit our website here teachers.org and subscribe to our newsletter to go to everything head teacher chat We've got, a new, we've got a new new url and we're still learning it at teacherchat.com and uh, yes and if you are not signed up to our newsletter i really recommend that you do so i'm slightly biased because i write it but actually because i was a school leader for many many years at least 15 i kind of know what kind of stuff that you guys need to know each week so every monday and friday i put out all of the updates from the dfp Ofsted, you name it, anybody important, off call, 
and and ourselves from our Red U network. So you get everything you need to know in one email. So if you're interested, head over to our website, headteacherchat.com and sign up to the newsletter. And next week we are talking to Sam Strickland. We are. Can't wait to talk to Sam Strickland. About behaviour and culture again, basically. Behaviour and culture. There you go. I knew you would have loved that. So so if, please do join us next week to, uh, as we listen to Sam, who is fabulous. If you've not heard Sam before, you will really, really enjoy it. Sam was a speaker at our conference last year. He was. And honestly, the reaction that our guest made on the day after his speech was fantastic. You will love listening to Sam next week. So tune in next Tuesday at 7.30. I'm going to end with a quote of the day. Quote of the day. So Jonathan's favourite bit. Okay. <laughs> this is Phil Jackson, an American basketball coach. And he's, he was the manager of Michael Jordan at that time. And so the strength of a team is its individual members. The strength of each member is the team. And this is what we're talking about. It's about yeah. the culture of the team. And how we develop it. That's really lovely quote. Thank you, Jonathan. So, and thank you so much to Iona for joining us today. We hope you've all enjoyed it, and we hope you have a lovely afternoon. Bye, bye, guys. Thanks, Iona. Bye, everybody. Bye.